Russell thought that to represent things as being a certain way in judgment involved representing items as combined with one another. So to represent the pen as pink, what I do is I represent the pen and pinkness as combined with one another in a certain way. Now doing that requires two things. First, I need to bring to consciousness the items that, as, that I would represent as related in that way, the pen and the property of pinkness. But that this, in addition, I need to bring to consciousness the mode of combination, the way in which I'm representing those two items as combined with one another. And that's the crucial problem. Russell tried to explain this awareness of the form of combination by uh, appealing to these entities that he postulated, which he called pure forms, and he thought that we could access those abstract things with some sort of mental capacity, and by being aware of those pure forms, we brought the form of combination into, into the episode of judgment. Now that's, I think, the main issue that Wittgenstein had with Russell's position. Wittgenstein thought that forms could not play, couldn't play this role, and that an account of judgment that invoked, invoked forms in this way was not going to work. His idea was to uh, appeal to facts. The picture theory says a picture is a fact. If I want to represent the pen as being pink, I can take, say, the stapler, the fact that the stapler is black, and I say, look, this is my picture. I connect the stapler with the pen and blackness with uh, pinkness, and I say, well, the way in which blackness and the stapler are combined here, that's how I represent pinkness and the pen as combined. Okay? That was his alternative, where there's no need to appeal to these abstract entities, the forms. Instead, you basically abstract them from the way in which the constituents of facts are combined in them. Uh, for Wittgenstein, facts are the primitive, uh, indivisible uh, items of his ontology. So the fact, say, that the pen is pink, that's, that's as far as it gets. That doesn't have any constituents. So what sense can we make of talking of pens and pinkness? How can we make sense of talk of those things if they don't really exist as separate items, according to Wittgenstein? Well, his position there was that they were really the result of abstraction from facts. So you've got the fact that the pen is pink, you've got the fact that the pen is made of plastic, you've got the fact that the pen, the pen is in my hand, etc., etc. And then you detect a similarity between all these facts. They have something, we see them as something, having something in common. Well, that common feature of all those facts is what we think of as the pen. Same for properties. So uh, we, we have the fact that the Pink, the, pink, the pen is pink, we have the fact that the shirt is pink, the flower is pink, and again we detect that all those facts, although they are separate and independent, for us have something, have something in common, and that common feature that all we see all those facts as having is what we think of as the property of pinkness, or being pink. So for him, uh, objects, both particular and universal, are not uh, fundamental independent entities, what they are is abstractions from the primitive entities which are the facts.